The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. That is a statement that I believe most of us have heard, or we have maybe even said that ourselves. But do you really believe it? Do you really believe that the battle is not yours, but God's? That is the question. The reason I ask this is because so many of us, we seem to live our lives in a manner where we believe that the battle is ours and that the battle is ours alone. Sadly, many end up losing the battle because they end up believing that the battle was only theirs and theirs alone. They ended up fighting it by themselves not depending on any assistance or any help from the one who could help. For those who are genuine in faith in the Lord to say that the battle is not yours, but it is his. Mm -hmm. That is a statement about your faith. Mm -hmm. This is a statement that speaks to trusting in him. To trusting in the Lord rather than thinking that the battle and all the skirmishes that happens within the battle is just yours. Mm -hmm. When I tell you that the battle is not yours, it is an encouraging statement, an encouraging word for you to take a moment to stand still and to put your hope, to put your trust, to put your faith in the Lord and that God can handle what you are dealing with what you are going through, what you are in a battle with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we go through life, we find that life itself, the journey and all that comes with it can be quite the battle. Mm -hmm. Like the children of Israel, we have many trials. We have many tribulations. We have many adversaries that we end up fighting and battling against on our journey Mm -hmm. on our journey to make it to the land of heaven that has been promised to us by the Lord. So I feel today on this mother's day that we must focus here on our battle. I feel like we must focus on the battle and how we go about enduring our battle how we go about enduring the battle so that we can reach the finish line so that we can reach heaven so that we, in other words, can be victorious in our fight. Now there are many ways that we can choose to deal with our battle to reach that finish line. First, we could try to take on the battle to reach that finish line by ourselves. Again, without any assistance from the one who is able to help us to the finish line, Mm -hmm. the one who can help us be victorious. Secondly, instead of trying to take the battle on because it is so hard, because it is so difficult, we could give up. We could give up. We could stop fighting. We could Mm -hmm. simply run away from the fight. Third, we could choose to wait on the Lord. We could choose to wait on God. In other words, we could choose to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. We could choose to be unmovable. Rely on him. Rely on his help Mm -hmm. in this battle so that we can endure so that we can make it so that we can reach the finish line so that we can be victorious. Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you, Mm -hmm. there are a few ways that you can choose to, to fight this fight. Which way will you choose? I would suggest to you today that taking on this battle and all of the fights that goes on within this battle, trying to take it on by yourself, That is a very poor strategy to take. Mm -hmm. Many people in scripture, they tried to do this and they did this with tragic results. Mm -hmm. I feel like a very good example of the one that tried to do this in scripture would be King Saul. You see, Saul, he was a man who was given a very extraordinary opportunity to walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
He was given an opportunity as he was anointed and allowed to be the king of Israel. Yet we find that with this opportunity that was given to him, Mm -hmm. Saul did not rely on God as an ally. He was given an opportunity for God to be his ally. Mm -hmm. But Saul said, "Uh uh-uh, no way. I don't need an ally. Come on, come on. This was shown to us by his unlawful sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And by this unlawful sacrifice of his, we saw that Saul, he became a man of impatience. Right. He became a man that could not wait on the one who should have been his ally. Come on, come on. He became a man that could not wait on the Lord. Right. Yeah. In his impatience, Saul, he grew to be a man that would not even heed the voice of God. He would not only not heed the voice of God, but he would not follow the commands of God. This again Mm -hmm. shown to us when God commanded that he destroy Amalek, the Amalekites. But Saul said, "Uh uh-uh, no way. I don't need to do that. I don't have to do that. I am not going to do that. Saul, he had gotten so far away from the Lord that he literally began to take on battles by himself and without God's assistance. In the end for Saul, the the consequences were tragic. They were not only tragic for him, they were tragic for his sons, and they were tragic for all of them that followed him into battle. You see, in the end, Saul, he tried to will himself to victory. But you see, even our will at times cannot lead us to victory especially when it comes to this fight, this battle that is trying to endure life. You see, we need help. We cannot be like Saul Mm -hmm. where God is saying, I want to be your ally. Mm -hmm. I can help you endure. I can help you reach the finish line. I can help you be victorious. We cannot say to God, "Uh -uh." uh-uh. We cannot say, God, no, thank you. I don't need your help. Mm -hmm. We can't say that to God. I again tell you today, that will be a very poor strategy Mm -hmm. for one to take in this battle. Do you hear me here today? At the same time, I would also suggest to you today that the Lord does not desire for anyone to give up in this battle Mm -hmm. because the battle is a difficult one. I would tell you today that God does not want you to run away from the fight. You see, some have given up because they are, they are exhausted. Mm -hmm. They are exhausted from fighting the fight and they can no longer endure. So they just pass out. They just fall down to the ground. Others have given up because fear. They fear what is ahead of them in the battle and fear it paralyzes them. And we know in this paralyzation that it holds them back from wanting to fight. It holds them back from fighting. It holds them back from pushing forward in the fight. It holds them back from going over those hills, those mountains and through the valleys. It holds them back from pushing through their trials and their tribulations. In other words, it holds them back from leaning on the one who can help them over those hills, Mm -hmm. those mountains and through those valleys. Mm -hmm. It holds them back from leaning on the one that can help them through their trials and through their tribulations. It even holds them back from enduring their adversaries Mm -hmm. and their great adversary. Let us remember that when the children of Israel entered into the promised land, Mm -hmm. that the Lord, he spoke to Joshua and he commanded Joshua Mm -hmm. 
and the children of Israel not to be afraid. He commanded them to be strong. He commanded them to be of good courage. See, there was no need for them to fear the road that was ahead because God was always going to go before them. Not only was God always going to go before them, but God was always there with them. He was there to be their shield. He was there to be their protector, protecting them on every side. I want you to listen to these encouraging words Mm -hmm. that the Lord had for Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you Mm -hmm. all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Joshua, I will not leave you Mm -hmm. nor forsake you. You see, God was their shepherd. Mm -hmm. He was their shepherd that cared for. He was their shepherd that protected them along the way. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that we have a shepherd. Not only have a shepherd today, I want you to personally know that you have a good shepherd today. You see, you have a good shepherd in God who is always protecting you. Protecting you from those that desire to come upon you and to cause great harm to you. You see, we have a good shepherd today that will not only uh, guide us, but this good shepherd will protect us today. He will not allow the wolves to come into the field and and scatter us and, and try to consume us, try to destroy us. You see, we are always under the watchful eye of our good shepherd. When he spoke of being the good shepherd, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them Mm -hmm. and they follow me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I give them eternal life is what Jesus said. And they shall never perish. He said, Mm -hmm. Jesus said, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You are protected today. Come Come on. Jesus said, my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one, he said. I want you to know today that you are in his protection. You are in his care today. I feel I must remind you that you have a guide in this battle. Yeah, yeah that will guide you to places of rest Mm -hmm. so that you can rest up so that you can be able to endure in this battle. That is your life and, and journeying to the finish line. We not only have a guide, but we have a protector. Mm -hmm. You have a protector in this battle to fight for you Mm -hmm. so that you can survive Mm -hmm. All of what is thrown your way so that not only can you survive, but so that you can also endure as well. Do you hear me here today? So why should we give up? Why should we be afraid? You will never grow weary when you realize that the battle, it ain't yours. You will never grow weary when you realize that the battle is not yours and that it is the Lord's because your protector is mighty. I want you to know today. I want you to understand today that he is greater than all of your. He is greater than all of our adversity that we face along the way. And because he is greater I want you to understand. I want you to know today that you can win this battle. Do you know that you can win this battle today? If you know it, I want you to to hear this today. Keep pushing forward. Keep pushing forward confidently, knowing that you can win this battle. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on the Lord. So, 
with this in mind, all that we have just heard here in my opening here today, mm-hmm. I feel that I must ask you today, what do you think of when you hear the word protector? What do you think of when you think of one who is a protector? You see, I think of someone who is always watchful. I think of someone who is always on guard. You see, I also think of someone who, if a situation was to arise, is able to provide safety, is able to provide security, is able again to provide protection Mm -hmm. so that the one who they are protecting can survive, can live and can make it. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do here now is I, I want you to see how our mighty protector, I want you to see how he works. Mm -hmm. And I want you to see this through scripture today. I want to show you some doctrine to back up the words that I am sharing here with you today. And we will see this here in the 20th chapter of second Chronicles. In this chapter, we come across a very interesting moment here in time for Judah, where Judah, the Southern kingdom, we find them in a similar situation as their brethren in the Northern kingdom from my sermon that I referenced uh, in text last week, where Israel had a choice to make. They could either lean on the Lord or not. Mm -hmm. We saw that they chose to lean on Exodus. Mm -hmm. We have a choice today as to who who we will lean on. And I hope that you are leaning on the right one. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, Judah, they were under the reign of Jehoshaphat, Mm -hmm. who was one of the good ones. He was one of the good kings of Judah. He walked in the way of the Lord. Jehoshaphat, he led reforms to turn Judah away from its wickedness that they had been living under, under the reign of Asa. He, He desired from them to turn away from that wickedness, essentially to repent and to turn back to God and to live under his way, to live under his commandments, to keep and to follow his commands. Now, interestingly enough here in our scripture for today, in the first and the 10th verse, we will find here that after these reforms were made, that Judah's adversaries of old, they seem to come knocking on the door. We are told there that Moab, Ammon, and others from Mount Seir, they came. Hey, what y'all got going on here? What y'all up to? They were watching. And they, we are told, desired to do battle against Jehoshaphat, Judah, and Jerusalem. Kind of funny, isn't it? Very interesting here. That Jehoshaphat, was leading Judah in repentance, leading them through their trials and their tribulations of wickedness, turning them back to the Lord. And and it seems here Mm -hmm. that as soon as they were making it through those trials and those, those tribulations of wickedness that had been put on them, that their adversaries happened to pop right up. They were making the turn and the adversaries were saying, hello, how y'all doing? We here. Life like that, ain't it? Life seems to be filled with these kinds of moments for us. You make it through one storm and another storm seems to be right around the corner. You make it through one trial, here comes another. Mm -hmm. Like it ain't happy that you made it through that trial. You make it through one tribulation and you sitting there like this. You got your hands thrown up in the air and the next one come. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Why are you celebrating? What's going on? Let me keep you a little company now. And we are left with more trials and more tribulations. 
for Judah. I want to point out that these were adversaries that were supposed to have already been rid of. They, they weren't supposed to be dealing with them. But as I have mentioned, people like Saul, their forefathers, they failed to rid the nation of these enemies, even though God had commanded it. These adversaries, they were allowed to hang around and we find that they were again now causing trouble for Judah. See, this, I believe, is representative of something that happens to us today. I believe that this is representative of how some of the hardest things that we go through in life, some of the hardest things that you seem to face in life are those things that we were never able to truly put away from us. We became a new creature, but those old things were still grabbing at us, trying to reach on us, trying to to lay a hold on us, trying to to keep us away from, from moving forward to the heavenly kingdom. They were there just trying to pull us and yank us back from the Lord because we again were never able to put those things away from us, Mm -hmm. even though God had commanded us to do so. Something within us was still loving those old things. Mm -hmm. That old man was still putting up a fight. Even after we have confessed our faith in the Lord, we find that we will struggle with our old self. And there lies another fight for us. Mm another battle for us our old ways which end up adding on to the new trials and tribulations Mm -hmm. that we go through as paul said we the genuine believer we are hard pressed on every side yet paul would tell you Mm -hmm. that even though you are hard pressed on every side you are not yet crushed come on come on I want you to know that when Paul said that, he said that with confidence. There's that word again. We saw it in our Sunday school lesson. Paul said something confidently in our Sunday school lesson about heaven. Paul was a confident man. Now, now, now the question that we have here is how could Paul say this so confidently? How, how, how could he say that we are not crushed, even though we are hard pressed on every side? Where was this coming from? Now, again, let us pay close attention here to how Jehoshaphat responded to this situation, how he responded to their being surrounded by their adversaries. Because, again, we are hard pressed on every side. I I believe that all of us want to respond in the manner in which that Jehoshaphat responded with here that we will see here today. We will see that his very first action was not to try and take on the battle without God. It was not to give up. We are told here in the third verse that Jehoshaphat, he was afraid. We are told there. However, we are told here that Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. He sought the Lord in this matter where he and all of Judah were essentially surrounded by their adversaries. Jehoshaphat, he was afraid, but he didn't run away. He did not concede. He did not give up. He sought the Lord. In fact, in the fourth and the fifth verse, to take it a step further, we're shown that Jehoshaphat had all of Judah to join him. They they were to come together. They were to stand with him as he stood before the Lord. You see, Jehoshaphat, again, he was truly a man of, of genuine faith in the Lord. And again, his very first response as one who was genuine in faith was to turn to God. Do you see that there? You see, our response, should it not be the same? We say that we are of faith. We say that the battle is not ours and that it is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. But how often do we go out and confront the battle without God? 
Our response when we are fighting that uphill battle against our trials, our tribulations and our adversaries, it should be to seek God. We should set ourselves to seek the Lord. Now, as a king, Jehoshaphat, he could have moved like others would have done in that area. He could have moved with ego. He could have moved with arrogance. He could have moved with pride and he could have tried to fight Judah's adversaries by himself. But where would that have gotten him? Nowhere is what Hunt said. They would have been dead. Where does that get us today when we go out and we try to fight our uphill battles with arrogance, ego and pride? Jehoshaphat, he prayed. This was how he fought his battle. How we fight our battle today as a genuine believer should be prayer. Somebody's going to laugh at that, but I tell you, the very first thing that you should be doing in this battle and all of the things that you face in life, it should be to pray. Amen. In his prayer, we will first notice here in the sixth verse that Jehoshaphat, he acknowledged the power and the authority of the Lord. And he said there that no man could withstand God. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is there that can go up against God? Who is there that can defeat the Lord? Who is there that can be victorious over God? Mm -hmm. Some will foolishly answer that the devil can do it. But I've already shown y'all that the devil ain't equal to God. Amen. The devil has no power over God. There is nobody that can challenge God. There is nothing that can challenge God. There is no trial that you can go through that can challenge God. There is no tribulation that is too much for the Lord. There is no adversary that you can have that can defeat God. God, I want you to hear today, is undefeated. The battle ain't yours. Do you hear me here today? Amen. After acknowledging God's power and authority here, I want you to see that Joseph, Jehoshaphat then spoke of what the Lord had already done to these very same adversaries. Mm -hmm. Again, though these adversaries were never truly defeated as they should have been, Israel and Judah, they were able to withstand them in times past. So in acknowledging what had happened before with these adversaries, Jehoshaphat was essentially saying to the Lord here, he was saying in his faith that if you did it before, I know that you can do it again. You see, he knew that they, he himself and all of Judah, he knew that they could withstand these adversaries, right. even though they were surrounded on every side, mm -hmm. even though that they were hard pressed, if you will, yeah. on every side. Yeah. You see, we, we have that same saying today. Mm -hmm. If God did it before, he can do it again. That's, right. That's our mantra. That's what we live by. Yeah. Yeah. You see, that is our faith. Mm -hmm. You see, God brings us through so much in our life. Things that we might be aware of, things that we are unaware of. God has brought us through it. That is our faith. Mm -hmm. Believing again that if he has did it one time for us, that he will do it the second time, that he will do it the third time, that he will do it the fourth time, and so forth. Mm -hmm. He will most certainly do it again. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Now, Jehoshaphat, he continued with this same thought in mind as he prayed. Mm -hmm. We'll see there in the 12th verse, if you're still following with me here, we will see that he asked the Lord a question mm -hmm. about these adversaries. Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat, he asked, will you not judge them? All right. This was to ask are you not going to judge them as you did once before? Mm -hmm. You see, Jehoshaphat, he was showing that he clearly understood mm -hmm. 
that this looming battle was beyond him. It was beyond what he could handle. It was beyond what Judah could handle. It was beyond what all those who were in Jerusalem could handle. I want you to understand here that Jehoshaphat desired for God to take this battle completely into his hands. Do you desire for the Lord to take all of what you go through today? Your heartaches, your pains, your burdens, your worries, your stress, your trials, your tribulations, your afflictions, your adversaries. Do you desire for God to take that battle completely, totally into his hands today? You see, Jehoshaphat desired that because he saw these adversaries defeated once before. And he knew that if God completely took the battle over in his hands, he knew that it could happen again. Now, within this prayer, there's something else that we'll see from Jehoshaphat here. After asking for the Lord to move in judgment of his adversaries, we will see that Jehoshaphat makes one of the most humble admissions that we will find in Scripture. In that very same verse there, the 12th verse, we see that Jehoshaphat said to the Lord here, look at this closely. He said, we have no power. Do you see that? One of the most humble admissions that we will find in scriptures. He says, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. He didn't stop there. Jehoshaphat said, nor do we know what to do. We don't know what to do, he said. We don't have power and we don't know what to do with our adversaries. What a humble admission this is here. How often do you humbly admit when you don't know what to do to the Lord? How often do you humbly admit to God that you don't have power over what you are going through? How often do you do it today? In times when our trials and our tribulations and our afflictions are so great, I tell you today, we should humbly admit these things to the Lord. Can you do this today? Will you do this today? When your adversaries, and this includes the devil as well, when they join in and they add on to our trials and our tribulations, and you feel hard pressed on every side, can you humbly admit that you are, or they are too great for you to handle? You see, Jehoshaphat understood this very well. Jehoshaphat understood that the Lord was still with Judah, not only as their guide and their director, but also as their shield and their protector. So because he genuinely believed in the Lord, he was not ashamed to admit when he didn't know what to do. He was not ashamed to admit when he needed help in this fight. With God watching over them, why would they have to fight a battle? Why would they have to fight a battle when the Lord was always more than ready to fight on their behalf? It makes you wonder why we as genuine believers today, it makes you wonder why we are so adamant to jump out in front of God in all that we go through in life. Why are we so adamant to, to jump out in front of God and try to fight our battles by ourselves? What is with our stubbornness? What is with our ego, our arrogance, or our pride to do this? You see, we, we, we have to reach a place in our mindset to where we are not ashamed to admit when we need help where we are not ashamed to admit our limitations mm -hmm. and know when we are not capable of taking on our trials, our tribulations and our adversaries by ourselves. Yeah, okay. You see, God is with all of us who have genuinely believed and received the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
And we are making our way to that land of heaven. God is with us. I want you to understand today on our journey. As he was to Israel, the Lord is to us, his children. He is our guide. He is our director, but he is also our shield and our protector. So why should you as a child of God feel you have to fight your own battle when the Lord is always more than ready to fight that battle for you? In our key verse today, we'll see the Lord say to Jehoshaphat and to all of Judah, in a response to his prayer, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but mine's it's mine's is what God said there. You see, there was no need for them to be concerned or even afraid when they were surrounded by so much adversity. I want you to hear today that the same holds true for you today. The same holds true for all of us who genuinely believe in the Lord today. We have no need to be concerned or even afraid when we are surrounded by so much adversity in our life. When the battle seems like it is raging and getting too great for us, we have no need to be afraid or even concerned. You see, God goes before us. And he is very well aware of what is ahead of us. He is very well aware when adversity surrounds us on every side because he is with us as we are again making our way to heaven. An enemy to one who is in fellowship with the Lord, I want you to hear today, they become an enemy of his. Again, our enemies are all of those things that try to push us away from the Lord. And I want you to hear today that God is not going to allow anything to push us away from him, nor is God going to allow anything to snatch us out of his hands. God is going to simply brush these things away from him and from us with a swift stroke of his hand. That is what God is going to do for you today. This is what our protector is to us today. Mm -hmm. He's always watchful. He's always on guard for us. And when anything comes up upon us to try and cause us great harm, he's simply going to flick it away like it is nothing. He is greater than anything or anyone that you can deal with and go through today. In the 27th Psalm, David said that the Lord was his light and salvation. And he asked, who should he fear? David, he said that the Lord is the strength of his life and asked, who should he be afraid of? You see, David was a man who diligently sought the Lord in his soul today. David, he said in his heart, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and they fell. He said, though an army may encamp against me, David said, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. David said, in this, I will be confident. All that we go through on this journey is trying to tear us apart. It's trying to destroy us trying to consume us in our soul. In other words, it's trying to defeat us as we fight, as we battle. And I ask you today, are you confident that your soul can handle such a battle without the Lord? I ain't confident that my soul could handle such a battle without God. You see, I don't have the arrogance or the ego to answer yes to that question. Because I don't have that arrogance, because I don't have such ego or such pride, I lean on my protector. I lean on my protector and I tell you this, he delivers me. God delivers me from all of my troubles. God delivers me from all of my trials, from all of my tribulations, all of my afflictions, 
all of those things that stands as my adversaries and my great adversary today. You see, I know this and I can testify of this because at this time last year, God was busy doing that for me. As I laid on a hospital bed recovering from getting my new kidney. And I stand here today victorious over that fight that lasted me five years. I stand here today victorious because it was God that brought me through that fight. Not myself, not my own will. And again, I tell you today, if he did that for me, I know that he could do that for you as well in whatever it is that you may be going through. You see, I want you to know today that we should have the confidence of David as we go through life. As we go on this journey, as we continue to fight and push our way, drawing closer to heaven, we ought to move forward with confidence. David was so confident that he did not have to fight his battles because he knew that the Lord would handle those battles for him. We again see here to Jehoshaphat in the 20th chapter of Second Chronicles in the 17th verse that the Lord had another word for Jehoshaphat. And we'll see that the Lord said to Jehoshaphat, you will not need to fight in this battle. I believe that the Lord says that to us today. You don't have to fight in this battle. And when we jump out in front of him, I believe that God is saying, what you doing? And I already told you, you don't have to fight. Why are you being foolish? What you're doing? He said again, to Jehoshaphat, you will not need to fight in this battle. He said, position yourselves. The Lord said, stand still and see the salvation. See my salvation is what God said there. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, he said, go out against them, for I am with you. He says that to us today. Again, I tell you, God don't want anybody giving up in the fight. He also don't want nobody jumping out in front of him in the battle. He just wants you to stand behind him as he goes before us, as he stands as our protector, fighting on our behalf. So I tell you today, have the confidence that the Lord is doing this for you Mm -hmm. and that as he moves forward, you keep pushing forward as well. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that in all we go through in life, I believe that God is our protector. And I want you to truly know today that the battle is not yours. It is his. Mm -hmm. Your trials, your tribulations, your adversaries, they are all the Lord's. You see, the battle is the Lord's because you are in fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. And anyone who is in fellowship with him, they are merged. They are together with him. Mm -hmm. And if should anything come up to try and bring harm against you, it is trying to bring harm against him. And he is not going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. As our protector, God tells us not to be afraid and not to jump out in front of him. And he tells us that, again, that we should not be trying to take all these things on by ourselves. You may be strong-willed. And again, you may believe that you can handle all these things by yourselves. But I tell you today, stop being foolish. Stop being arrogant. Stop being prideful. Stop being driven by your ego. Learn to humbly admit when this battle is too much for you. You see, even strong-willed people need the Lord. We who are of faith should remain steadfast. We should remain confident in the Lord taking on our battle. God, if we do this, is going to take on our battles for us. And I tell you, he is going to be victorious. He is going to win. And when he wins, I want you to know today that all those who are in fellowship with him, they win, we win as well. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Amen. 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 Amen.